So closing remarks, um, I'm going to be very brief, and I'm going to use this time to thank everyone that's here, um, just so that I don't miss anyone. I wrote down some notes, um, so you'll apologize my reading them. But um, first, of course, our speakers. Um, these are hard, complex, wide-ranging topics, both in conception and geography. Um, and we have all benefited from your willingness to present both um, your expertise and your insight and analysis um, and how we should understand and respond to the effects of climate, or as I like to say, the effects of water being where it shouldn't be, water being where ice was and water being where land is. Um, and I'd really, I really wanna thank you guys, the audience, um, both for coming to join us today and, um, and your daily work in this area. I know that there are a lot of um, congressional staff, government officials, um, local government officials here um, who are dealing with the nitty gritty of resilience um, on a day to day ba basis, um, as well as uh, uniformed military officers and um, academics whose research we leverage um, in all the decision making that we do. Um, our speakers, I'd like to thank Dr. Gong, who gave us all an idea of um, the situation in the Arctic and what's happening. Um, Sherry, whose work in this area has truly molded and driven the climate security field um, at a, a very strategic level. Um, Dave, who uh, was willing and able, um, he, able, to leverage technology and help us understand how uh, maritime forces are and need to prepare and, to use John's word, plan. Um, for melting Arctic. Um, Scott, who reminded us that the interagency is not an org chart, it's culture. Um, and Anne, who was willing to let me coordinate what seemed to be thousands of conference calls over the past couple weeks with uh, leaders in San Diego so that we could learn about the uh, memorandum of understanding that came into being out there. Um, and all of the research that she put in um, to learning about the other regions that she is now um, quite an expert on. Um, John Conger, my boss, somewhere out there. Thank you. Uh, he is the most level-headed, practical, and compassionate person. Don't let the cynicism fool you. Um, when you bring a crisis to this man uh, or a challenge, he responds with excitement, which is why I think he is absolutely perfect um, and an optimist and the perfect person to head an organization, the Center for Climate and Security, that focuses on existential threats. Um, also, last but certainly not least, my partners in crime who helped conceptualize the panels and the conversation um, that we had here today. Uh, Professor Elizabeth Andrews, who did an immense amount of work both behind and in front of the camera. Um, and perhaps most importantly, especially as she is a dear friend, um, Dr. Kay Floyd, whose wise counsel and creative troubleshooting um, made this day possible. So she really deserves a huge round of applause. Um, <laughs> Um, and Kay and Elizabeth's team, Madeline and Angela, who did a lot of work towards this, as well as our AV and our tech staff who made this happen. Um, so I would just say that the themes today that I pulled out, I'm not going to use the P words, I'm going to use the C words, um, coordination, collaboration, and communication. Um, although we had two very disparate topics in our panels, yet they both impacted, you know, forces in this region and structures in this region, um, I think that the, the message from a lot of the speakers was really that um, communicating and coordinating and collaborating, bringing different ideas to the table and then, you know, actually sharing them um, helps, you know, us put together a, a more comprehensive and effective policy plan for dealing with these issues. So, um, you know, whole of government's not an org chart either, it's a way of thinking. <laughs>